Um, the next movie, page eight, we are going to be adding the small details such as the concentric circles that I repeat, uh, that I call the repeat circles. This is the finished neon clock and this is it without the logo art. So you can see that the uh, concentric circles, let me move, remove the hands too, so that the concentric circles are just a design element. That's all they are. So let's just get that done um, and then we'll go right to the hands. If you hit the L key, which is the ellipse tool, and you click on your, your layer that you've created and you start in the very center, hold Command and Shift, and then make your first circle because it'll constrain itself to a perfect circle. Uh, just inside the numbers okay and what I've done is I made it um, just a light kind of a yellow okay uh, mine is an orange so it just kind of goes with it one point in thickness now to do the second circle and then to let uh, after uh, after effects <laughs> to let illustrator do the rest of the circles um, just take the scale tool and click on the center icon uh, right in the center where the guides meet that way when you actually scale it to 90% uh, or any size you want, I'm going to scale mine to 90, um, Command D will duplicate it from that point. So let's just make sure that it does that. So I'm going to scale a copy to 90% and then just keep on hitting Command D to the inside. And since the logo eats up that much area, that's plenty of circles. Um, I'm going to um, shift click all those circles. So um, since I've already done it once, um, actually, I'll probably just take those away. So um, what I've done is I've already created that, so I'm just gonna throw that away, but I made them into a group. So here's my group, and now we can go on to the hands. So I'll lock that up, and then I'll hide it for now so we can do the hands. Now in the hands, um, I wanna get rid of the um, uh, clock face so it's not in our way, and then get rid of the clock frame so I can just concentrate on the guides and the numbers so I can see where that's happening. Um, what I might do is just throw the the back circle in there. Let me see where that back circle is. Um, do, 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 clock face. It's going to be in clock face and it's the bottom path. So I'll go like that. I'll turn off the neon one and then I'll just um, click on uh, the one circle, not that circle, the inside circle. So I have an idea of where that is. Now let me open up the hands. And what I've done is I've created a hand that is um, half of um, where I want it to be, okay? M meaning that's exactly where I want the hand to be, but I've only created half, so you can see how I went up there. Let me turn off the numbers now so we can see this perfectly. There's the numbers, okay. There's my hand, uh, my clock hand, and what I'm gonna do is with it selected, I am going to go to the Reflect tool, and in the Reflect tool, I'm going to um, have the Reflect tool um, so you have to hold down where the rotate tool is, go to the reflect tool, and then to actually have it um, do what it needs to do, hold the option key and click on the very center guide. In that way, it will know that it's supposed to, I'll turn off preview, in that way it's, it now knows that it's not supposed to pivot on any, on any point but what you have determined. So if you were to option click an inch away, then the copy would be an inch away from that. So it's up to you to tell it where to pivot. Okay, so I've done it on the vertical axis. I'm going to hit copy, and now we have a copy that's perfectly positioned. So all I really have to do here to make my hand look real nice is join it together. So if I were to take the um, direct selection tool and marquee both these two points, Command J should, didn't say would, should, join those together. If it doesn't, then I'll have to deal with it. But right now I'm going to take the P key and I'm going to option click. And what I've done is I've now made a complete shape out of it. And in a few minutes, I'm going to, well, right now, I'm going to, in a few minutes, I'm going to color it. But right now I want to add the bottom circle. So I'm going to, you know, the dial where it actually, let me show you the finished product. This is what it's actually going to turn out like. Okay, so there's the hand. I've done a little bit of a top shape to have some fun with it, but there's the bottom hand with a little bit of a, ro of a rotation dial right, right there. So that's what it's going to look like in a few seconds. So let me go like this, bring back the one that you and I created together, which is just going to be a fill in a minute. And let's take the L key, hold Option and Shift, and make a circle to our liking somewhere in here. Okay, now. Let's um, see if that's too big. 
that might actually be too big, but I don't care. Let's see. Oh, I don't know why I opened that up. Okay. Uh, actually, that's a little bit too big, but that's okay. Um, let me go like this and just scale it down just a pinch. Okay. Um, double click it. Let's scale it to 90%. And now that's good. So what I'm going to do is join these two things together, but I'm going to want that inside circle to be kind of cool. So I'm going to make it right now. All right. So I'm going to duplicate that same circle. I'm going to double click the scale tool and I'm going to make it go to 60%. And then I'm going to say, okay, so now I have that one perfectly positioned and ready for that little dial um, artwork, um, or actually a radial fill in a few minutes. So now let's click on that circle. Let's click on this. Let's remove the stroke from both and add a fill to both. Now let's use the unite in the uh, pathfinder to unite them together. Then I remove the fill. I'll take a, um, uh, now I will take a fill of this gradient, which I will put into this. Let me hit the G key and start from up and work my way down. And now I have a real nice feel for this. Now when I turn on the clock, um, the actual clock face, so we can get a feel of how that's going to look, I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, uh, add a stroke of this real light pale yellow. So it has a really nice feel to it, but I'm going to go to 0.5 so it's not so bad. Now look at how gentle that looks. And let's take away the command colon guide so I can see how good that looks. Now let's go in the center. Let's click on that other circle that was in the center. And let's click a radial fill on that one just to give it kind of a neat kind of center so it looks like it's a little bit of a raised hand. Now in a few minutes you're going to want to give that a drop shadow uh, when you're all finished, whenever you are finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you where the hands were in this one right here. And then I'm going to show you the hands shadow. Now all I did was duplicate everything and move it down to the bottom left and uh, to the bottom right, I'm sorry, and I gave it um, a real nice feel. So what I did was I went in, let me let me open it up. I took all three of those items and I have an opacity to 90% and I put it on multiply. So uh, we can do that in a couple of minutes um, when I get them all done. Now, in order to go back to this one, let's take this hand and what I did was I made another hand uh, a copy of that same hand and I put it down going to the bottom. Okay, actually, um, you know what? I did leave it at one point stroke. So let me put that back at a one point stroke. Okay, and then I made kind of a neat little second hand to tick off the seconds and I'll put the numbers back in so you see that they kind of look kind of neat like that. Now to do a shadow, all we have to do is grab all of those items and then fill them. So I'm going to use a copy um, I'll take the hands and I'll duplicate it. I will move it down below the hands, double click it and call it hands shadow. And then let's, um, we're going to put a transparency on this and do um, uh, in the transparency palette, which do I have that up on screen? No. Let me get the transparency palette up on screen because that's where I get to change my modes, which is right down here. And there's your mode switch. So let's go um, take a copy of that. So I'm going to lock up the, um, the hands are, are up on top. Okay. And now I'm going to leave them locked. Let's go into the hands. And now what I need is, um, I don't need this. Let me turn off the hands for a second. Just only need, I don't need this to be part of it. I only need three things. I need the outer shape of the second hand. I need the one down there and I need the one right there. So I'm going to throw away the center circle. And now I have two. I don't need two of those. Okay, so now I just need these three items to be selected, which I've done. And I will remove the fill and the stroke and I'll make it be, um, it could even be a black that I could put on a transparency. I'm not exactly sure what the other color was, but let me put it on a rich black, like something like this red black. 
Okay, now let's go on the transparency palette. Let's turn on the hands, which are locked at this point. Let's hit the E key so I can kind of move this down and to the right, just like this. Just so it has kind of a nice feel over to the one side, maybe a little bit up higher like this. Okay, and let's put the opacity on about 70%. and then on multiply so it kind of enriches itself in the colors that are already there and you know what I probably could go even less on the opacity let's try 50 percent so it's just a gentle shadow this time now let's take the selection tool let's click away from it and you have a nice shadow for, for, for your hands that raises them up off the clock face and gives them a little bit better feel so um, we'll turn on before I leave this let's turn on the outer frame Let's turn on the logo art so you can see that it even comes off that quite well. And um, I believe the next thing that we have to do is the little tick numbers because I've already done everything on page eight. I've even done some of it on page nine. Let me put my paper over here. And the next thing is the small increments, which we're going to go to a brand new palette, which is in the effects palette, which is called Transform Effect. And it's really cool, and it's all kind of um, a biggie for me in this file, okay, to make this right. I uh, didn't turn on the logo glow, which I don't want that orange on, if I remember correctly. No, I don't. I should throw it away. And I do want the repeat circles on, so they look good. I could even put those repeat circles, if you're looking at my screen, on a little bit of a transparency. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Let's click on this and let's transparency them to about 80% so they kind of just melt into the background and become a little bit less. Okay, 80% wasn't enough. Let's go to 50%. Probably too much. No, I like that. 50% is nice. So let's go backwards and what else didn't I put on? Um, logo art, numbers layer. Uh, I'm going to take the hand shadow and lock it up. The numbers layer gets locked up. Logo art, logo glow. Repeat circles, clock face is the right clock face. Neon layer, I knew I had something. And now we're getting real close to finishing up our neon clock, okay? I'll see you in the next movie.